Saint Grit is a book he wrote. A novella, right? Yes, Saint Grit. I, I know yes. that. I don't know why I'm like. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah coming out through ghoulish books maybe today if this is when the episode goes live i don't know i am not great with uh scheduling things on time so it's possible this may come out in 2026 <laughs> i assume saint grit the movie's out by then uh saint grit the, the, the television the, the series, trilogy yeah merch line oh, what yeah. what kind of uh, <laughs> merchandise are you anticipating <laughs> shirts uh yeah. we're gonna do lanyards you know we're gonna yeah. do uh, <laughs> maybe well, special uh, uh neckties would be cool neckties yeah masks neckties would be great uh, yeah. we i don't have it in this side of the bookshop we have a a plastic satan mask that is almost identical to the, what's on the front cover that we have hanging up in the bookshop i'll have to send you a photo if i haven't already but we I saw that it. we saw it at like the shopping mall and we thought, oh, we have to get this for like fun St. Grit photos. <laughs> That's yeah. the only reason we bought Perfect. it. Yeah. That's have, awesome. Do you do you have many masks? I, I saw you sent me a photo <laughs> of yourself with the mask on. You must I was gonna say I do. I have a few masks. I, I'm kind of a mask collector, at least in the beginning stages. I like um I like the work that goes into them. I think they're cool. So this you is know, a new start- thing. This, it, relatively, yeah. Last few years, yeah. I have a, I have a, like six masks. One of them is a replica of Corey Taylor of Slipknot. Um, it's a of, of his uh, mat, not of him. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I realized how I worded that. <laughs> I was really excited. Wow. <laughs> Big fan. Um, what no. a great mask that would be. <laughs> If you chill it inside be- out, you get a great slash oil, I bet. That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay. So you have that mask and what else? Um, what did I say? The Corey Taylor uh slipknot mask. Um, I have a Michael Myers mask. I have a few satanic masks and just some like, I don't know, funky looking demonic. Nice. What what got you into uh mask collecting? Um, I started with the uh <laughs> i had uh the intent of purchasing a killer clowns from outer space mask that yeah. i had been on on ebay years ago and um i lost i did not win that but um ever since then i've just wanted to like get masks and hang them around the house so that's pretty cool i've always wanted to get like the three masks from halloween three oh. Halloween three, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I have I have like mini versions of those masks that I have in the box that we got from Fright Rags a long time ago. But I would love like the actual size masks. I've always wanted to get those like as a tattoo as well. I just there's something about Same. them. Yeah. Did you I'm watch? Just about doing that. You watched the latest Joe Bob, right? The Halloween. I did, yeah. They had those pumpkins with the masks decorating, decorated on them. I thought those were so cool. I feel like disappointed they didn't show the movie, though. I thought I they know. were going we're, to. We're all just waiting on it. We're waiting for them to show yeah. and comment, commentate, but I don't think it's going to happen. Not in this lifetime. Maybe some of the <laughs> lifetime. I don't know. Uh so, so disappointing but yeah I it's know. the anticipation of it all right they keep you coming back because you think they might show it then they don't show it Are you a fan of halloween 3 i love halloween 3 yes okay oh, great i was i know you are i was gonna shut this off if you had yeah we were gonna <laughs> sync <Sankra> is done <laughs> with. it's done <laughs> Well, for those, for those listening who have like no idea what Saint Grit is, how would you uh, pitch it to someone? How would you explain the premise? Uh, Saint Grit is a book about a woman named Nadine Boone. Uh, it takes place in rural Florida uh, in a town called Sugar Bends. And she summons this witch inside of her that she calls Saint Grit by masturbating in the woods behind her house. And um, over three decades, we watch the the terror that she leashes upon her town and the people that have pissed her off. And uh, yeah, she's that, that's that's about it. It's definitely a 
a PSA against uh, masturbating in the woods. Yeah, I would don't, say. don't do it, guys. Don't well, do maybe, it. well, maybe do it. I mean, there's lots of pros to it. Then, right, yeah. <laughs> if you, you know, if you want to feel powerful, maybe do it, but just be careful. You know, you don't know what's out there. Do it wisely. Do it wisely. Do your home milk. Don't do it without reading and reviewing the same grit fills. I mean, that, that's right. And that goes without saying what what inspired this book i know you've been posting a lot of like um non-fiction books that you read like to research the book but what was like the initial like oh shit i have to write this moment um i read a book called witches in america by alex marr that came out uh maybe a decade ago and um she told this story uh she does like she's a journalist for like a lot of uh, like subcultures in the u.s and uh, a lot of fascinating stuff. And she interviewed this solitary witch that lives in Southern California. And um, she told her the story about how when she was a little girl, she um, she felt that giving herself an orgasm was very powerful and that she felt like that she could uh, make things happen, almost like a spell, so to say. Um, and uh, so she had this, so she started to ritualize herself masturbating. And, um, you know, so that she just felt very powerful upon doing so. And so that just kind of sparked an interest in, um, it kind of it actually sparked an interest in how young women particularly feel when they are like coming of age and just trying to, Feel, feel powerful um, in one way or another. And if what if this woman, Nadine in this case, was, um, you know, born nefarious and just, she brought that stuff upon her and like what, what would come of it, so to say? Yeah, I don't think I've read anything or seen anything witch related but like that was like the inciting incident but i'm also i don't claim to be like an expert of witch entertainment is this have you ever seen that in anything else besides this non-fiction book no never um not like that no yeah not enough masturbating witches in, in fiction yeah, that's what the craft was missing i think that's exactly <laughs> if they will remake the they have remade the craft, haven't they? They remade that, I think. The craft. They did recently, I think. It was a and... I'm not going to watch that. I refuse. No, no interest. I for... <laughs> Such little interest, I forgot they did it. Phil same thing. Same. If they, if they will, um, making Syncret into a movie, do you have any like casting ideas? I know lots of people when they write a book, they usually like visualize like the perfect casting choice. Is that something you do when you write? Uh, yeah, it is a little bit. Um, well, actually it's funny you mentioned that. One of the things I, I did visualize for this book um, and one of the variations of it was I was imagining a young Jessica Lange mm -hmm. and she played, um, when she was in her 20s, 30s, she was in The Postman Always Rings Twice. And that mm -hmm. kind of like the, the like chain smoking, the white sundress, the like the hair, that whole vibe was like very much inspired. Yeah. Uh, I can see that definitely. Yeah, it's just, have you read or I guess you haven't seen the movie because it's not out yet. Um, Eileen by Otessa Moshfeg. Is that how you say the well, name? Yeah, I love that book. I haven't seen it before such a good book the movie's also great but to me there's like a similar almost charisma between the kill tools in that book and also saint grit like this like i am just i make my own path and anyone else is just like a side yeah. kill tool in the story of mine only yeah 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 it's, it's very indulged self-indulgent like yeah. just self-indulgent terror for lack of a better word were you already like interested in in witchcraft stuff before you got this idea, and did you have to do a lot of research while writing it? Um, I wasn't too interested in it, and in, in like a serious way by any means. I mean, I grew up watching you know films, horror films, and reading horror books. So I mean, I've I've been exposed to that. Um, and you know, growing up in the '90s too, where like New Age came in and was like a a big thing <laughs> among uh, a lot of people <laughs> but um 
no, I, I, uh, yeah, I did not know anything about witchcraft, so to say, other than what I just know from a very, like, uh, like a very small point of view, like perspective from like the craft or, um, right. you know, uh, I'm trying to think of other films. It's just like the craft. And, yeah. <laughs> it's, just the the o- craft. it's the only witch movie. <laughs> <laughs> the craft and also Gummo somehow. Oh, Gummo, yes. That, I, uh, that, that's, that's freaking great. <laughs> I am glad. I think it, I think I was the one who suggested using Gummo as a title when advertising this. Yeah, so maybe it was you. No. It. no, it was okay. you. Yeah, okay. It. Yeah. It's such an odd, like, comp i think gummo meets yes. the craft but i can't think of any other way to like pitch this book i mean those are the prolific titles yeah, you have I mean, like, yeah kind of, like fly on the wall deranged dirty kind of storytelling i don't know i just i love it so it was i cool. would love hilmany corinne to adapt this that would, yeah, be, <laughs> that would be interesting i don't know if it would be great oh no i don't think so but uh yeah pretty cool <laughs> um well what is great is the book of pills um what Thank as you. a little I, let's talk about some of the books you've been posting about like the books you read for research what else did you read or study to help with this book um i read a book called um oh god now i won't be able to remember the name of it the tree it was called like the tree of life or the mm-hmm. story of trees or something uh came out like a decade ago um and uh i was just trying to when i knew i wanted to incorporate some sort of nature element into it i didn't know where it would come from and so you know in florida we are surrounded by swamps and farms so i wanted to write about trees so i researched trees now 90 percent of what i researched i did not use or it kind of went in one ear and out the other so to say but um yeah, I read that book. I read uh, Margot Adler's Drawing Down the Moon, which was about uh, paganism in the turn of the century. And, um, you know, I I just, I think the more you read about the subject you're writing about, the the deeper the story gets, even if you don't use yeah. half of what you read. It's just, it's, it just opens up different doors mentally. So I had fun doing that. When you said you were researching trees, I had this mental image of you at your computer <laughs> and going to Google and just typing trees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> the beginning of the research journey. I mean, it happen- It has to begin somewhere. And I mean, I've done similar things, just like plants, fans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and like microwaves. you said, it has to start somewhere, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> I haven't really thought a lot about trees. What's your favorite tree? Oh, that's a good... Well, my favorite tree in real life is the Douglas fir because they smell lovely and Mm -hmm. are gorgeous. But for this, for the podcast's sake, I'm going to tell you my favorite tree is the Manchineal, which is in Featured and Sacred. (laughs) I honestly had no idea it was a real tree until, like, I also Googled trees. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I don't know much about trees, I guess. I didn't realize, like, trees could be uh, dangerous. (laughs) Yeah, neither did I. And thankfully, I have never uh, come across a mansion eel because it is very dangerous. So, What kind of tree was that in um, Evil Dead? Oh, oh, my God. Oh, that's a good question. That's a problematic tree. That's a, I was going to say. That tree would not have a social media presence today. Yeah, no. (laughs) Not canceled. Canceled, I think, canceled, canceled. I think my favorite tree is a weeping willow just because it looks cool. Yeah. Yeah. They do yeah. look cool. Yeah. Weeping willows forever. I wouldn't want to be next to one though. I think there's too many like spiders just waiting yeah. to devile me. I don't um, know. I don't know. Enough about trees though. I found out after accepting the book, and I think even after like sending edits that St. Grit wasn't always a novella. It was somehow, it was much longer, right? But I don't really know much about what this longer book was. So can you talk about like drafting this book and how it ended up being the length it became? Yeah, sure. I started St. Grit in uh, 
the winter of 2015. And, um, oh my God, at the time my mother had just been diagnosed with cancer and, um, I was dying to write a novel to just lose myself in. And, um, <laughs> so originally I, I wrote that book three times. It was, a, it, it was a novel three separate times at about 90 K words. Um, originally it was, um, Nadine had, it was about Nadine with her two older daughters who were adults. One of them was a detective. The other one was a, uh, canceled rock star. And, uh, they had a younger brother who, um, was as, uh, wretched as Nadine. And, um, um, it was sort of how Sink Grit, although had emerged from, emerged and possessed Nadine had sort of like floated between all the children and was haunting them in their everyday lives. And, um, it's sort of how they all went back to, uh, sugar bends to confront the the witch which was their mother but um so i i i scrapped so much of that um and it became what it is now which is a different story entirely um that that and that novel had a lot of internal narrative and a lot of internal like emotions and i just i didn't want that i don't want to i didn't want to write like that anymore so that's I don't think I've ever scrapped so much of a book before. So like you telling me that just has me like shaking and sweating. Um, <laughs> was it like a specific moment? Will it hit you like, oh, wait, no, this is what the book needs to be. And like, had, had you done that before with scrapping something so, oh. magna so magnum and just like making something so shuttle with it? I mean, it, it, it freaks me out talking about this. <laughs> I, it is. It's stressful. You know, you put so, I mean, I worked... I worked so hard on that book. I mean, I, over the years and like, I just started, I had so much trouble with it and um, I eventually just started hating it, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to let go of this character of Nadine who I really enjoyed writing. And I just wanted to make her more evil. I wanted to make the story darker. And um, I don't know what it was exactly. Um, I think I just wanted to make it smaller mm -hmm. than it was. I don't even mean in like the page length. I just mean like in scope. Yeah, in scope, exactly. Yeah. You um you kind of remind me a bit of Josh Malaman in two in two ways. One, you have a very original voice. Well, if I read anything by you, I, I know, oh, this is this is Kaylee. Because I, I've read many other things by you, Shield yeah. Shillies, novellas, and so on. And yeah. also, you seem to have like a thousand novels already <laughs> written. How many books you already have ready to go? Um, other than Sacred, um, yeah, four more. Oh, okay, close, close to a thousand, <laughs> and then a bunch of short stories that I, yeah, you know, but, but yeah, but I just you have books coming out for the next couple couple of years after Saint Grit. What else do you have yeah. lined up? Oh my gosh, I'm uh, this was a very good year for me. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh yeah, Ghoulish, uh, you guys opened a lot of doors for me. Well, next year, uh, my book, Black Rain Season, is coming out mm -hmm. uh, through Curious Corded. And um, that is a about a, it, all these books take place in Sugar Bends. Um, that is about a, uh, uh, sorry, I'm stuck on St. Grit. It's okay. <laughs> We don't have to get into the plots if you don't want okay. to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, uh, it's about a serial killer in a rural Florida town. Um, and then uh, year after that, Yeehaw Junction is coming out from Struck <laughs> Press, which is it's impossible for me to see that name and not laugh. It's a it's a real town. It's a real town here. Oh, is a, it? <laughs> that's the most arranged thing I've ever written. So. Excellent. And that I that surprises me coming from someone who published Saint Great. <laughs> Um, let's talk a little bit about the front cover of St. Grit, because I, it's personally one of my favorite front covers we've ever published, even if it's probably going to get every, every social media account of L's banned eventually. I, be, I know it's hard to post it. I, um, I felt really nervous, I think, even pitching you the idea because it, it's pretty, um, graphic. graphic yeah and maybe 
uh, a different press and a different author might be a little afraid to, to uh, move filled with it, but not us. We we decided just oh. to do it. <laughs> I love the idea. I thought it was great. Yeah. It was, it's just very bold and, you yeah. know, Alejandra Oviedo, AKA Rutu, she mm -hmm. did an amazing job. It's outstanding. Yeah. Uh, do you want to describe what the front cover is? Yes. Because uh, I don't want to. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's uh Nadine's point of view. And um she, there is a man who in the story, his name is Elliot Walker. He is going down on her. Excuse me to any young listeners, I don't know, but that's Oh, please stop listening if you like child. <laughs> <laughs> um and uh he is he has uh a drugstore devil's mask pulled up um out of his face mm -hmm. and so she's looking straight at the devil and uh, that's one of my favorite scenes in the book so mine too yeah it's such good imagery like like i knew like i mean like when i was reading it before i even accepted it i think i like made a note of highlighting that section of like if we accept this this is can this would be a great front cover and i uh so i told you the idea you will down with it and then i began the process of like trying to find someone who could do it and i began hitting up a lot of um what type of elk milk is that called I, i'm struggling to like pin up oh. elk is that what it is oh yeah 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 the pin yeah up, yeah so I began like looking on Instagram and and so on for people who do that. And I would reach out to them and say, hey, I have this idea for Kevl, would you be down? And they would always say, yeah, of course. And then I would tell them the idea and then they would just ghost me. <laughs> so oh, I think what? I think um, Alejandra was maybe like the fifth person I, con I contacted. Oh my God, I didn't know that. That's oh. funny. Yeah, they will just like, nope, I don't know what this guy's talking about, but he sounds fucking deranged. <laughs> He's crazy. <laughs> until until we got Ruchu, who was just yeah. who was like, fuck yes. And then completely ignored my advice of, by the way, don't show any actual nudity. Oh, yeah. We just add the the leaves in there. <laughs> yeah. She was upset about that. She was like, I, I know. She was Bull needs to be nudity. I was like, but we'll try and sell this. To the yeah, we gotta <laughs> so we compromised by doing two different kevils and she was pretty happy once i gave yeah. i totaled that yeah. but what a what a roller coaster of like yeah. of, of events trying to get this kevil made really amusing i think and it came out so well i wish um, i could like frame it in the bookshop but we do have kids yeah. who come yeah, here right exactly That's I don't even know how we're going to display this book. Uh, good luck to every <laughs> bookshop who is ballsy enough to stock even the censored cover. I, amend, I recommend you. Yes. I'm glad you also have these other books lined up because it, it's really possible this cover may have killed like any chance you had at a career. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to know. <laughs> Initially, like, well, it's cool. It's fine. <laughs> I think it's cool though. I think it. I think it makes such a good statement. And like no one else has a book coming out with a cover like this, but yeah, you do. I haven't, a, I haven't seen one as bold or as graphic as. Yeah, I think bold is the way to go. Yeah, I mean it's this is synchronous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I before we go, I want to talk a bit about Sugar Benz because I didn't realize all of your little books also take place in this town. Is this a town based on Will You Live? What is it based on? Um, Sugar Benz is based a little bit off where I grew up in Bluntstown, Florida, uh, just less than 100 miles from Alabama. Um, there's a lot of farm country, a lot of back country in Northern Florida. And um, I spent a lot of time <laughs> um, when I was growing up uh, with my mother driving from Alabama to Georgia to Florida to Alabama to Georgia, et cetera, et cetera. And um, we moved a lot. And um, just the the rural places that uh, I I saw and uh you know i just I think all that inspired it so yeah i love small town horror too like most of us do so it's really stephen kingy i think to like just stick like one town and just keep like keep using that keep town. I, I love it i love that i, I love that i've never done it just because i'm a coward and i don't know how to do it <laughs> but i like that you will doing this oh you like 
are you keeping like track of a like of a history of this town from like different oh, yeah. events in the books and they interact and stuff yeah in um yeah and it's funny something in saint grid is mentioned that comes up again in black rain season and yeah. um so there's something yeah it's all connected in some some subtle way are you finding that challenging as you continue writing books like do you have to keep deciding on different times for the book to be set so you don't conflict with something else that's going on that's a good question um i should be careful of that <laughs> <Mental> <laughs> of <myself>. <laughs> <laughs> um i didn't really think of that um yeah i do i it's funny you say that though i guess i all the books are set they go from the 80s to 90s to um the book i'm writing right now takes place in 1999 so it's yeah i should think about that a little more <laughs> when i'm writing <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah, how big is the town i don't know um sugar bands i think i i have it it's like a ten thousand person oh god you need to keep track of this <laughs> yeah, it's very small, so. do you have like a big document you've made on anything like that oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah i have maps i've drawn maps i have notebooks and all the nerdy stuff that goes into this i always thought that would have been a cool thing to like king to put out like a like a fake nonfiction book about the history of this of one of his oh, towns yeah. that would be cool people would eat that up that would be great yeah i don't know if he's listening though <laughs> he listens to podcasts now i have seen him his Apparently. tweets only yeah. a fool about him so i think he just googles googles his name on podcast apps which i find pretty <laughs> hilarious <laughs> Because I do the same. We all do that. Uh, right. <laughs> but we're all not Stephen King. <laughs> uh, no. Not yet. You know what, though? Stephen King doesn't have a book with the, with the Frank of, the, uh, right. of Satan uh, fulfilling your little sex on somebody. So right. uh, take that one, Stephen right. Edward and King. Uh, I was going to ask, um, how can people find you online? But I know you've recently decided fuck social media for the most part yeah. uh for the most part yeah i'm just really burnt out um i i just had this thought of like um digesting what's happening in the middle east and mm -hmm. like looking at cat memes at the same in the same exact feed in the same exact platform is just kind of not good for my psyche so um yeah you do it but i'm on instagram uh under kaylee shoals and uh i also have a sub stack um mm -hmm. so to find me there what is the name of the substack uh it's it's called uh sundries and spooks okay. uh, but you can just find it with my uh name kaylee Schulz. that's a good name how did you um come up with that <laughs> sundries and spooks no kaylee yet <laughs> oh, <I was> like... <laughs> um how did i come up with it? i'm not sure i just uh yeah mm -hmm. It was a lame question. I don't know why I asked no, it. That's okay. No, <laughs> I'm just talking to I... talk. I don't know. <laughs> All right. I think that's about it. Anything else you wanted to bring up about St. Grit? Oh, uh, well, thank you to anybody reading it. And uh, just thank you for giving it a chance and giving me your time. And thank you, Max, for having me. What would a St. Grit mask look like? Ooh. Would it just be the Satan mask? I don't know. It's... No, I think it no. would be, you know what? It would be one of those illustrations from Betty Rock City. We didn't even talk about that. Before we leave, let's talk a little bit about the Betty Rock City illustrations. If anyone was about to leave, don't do it. Don't do get it. Get back, don't get back. <laughs> yes, Betty Rock Steady did some amazing illustrations for this book that I just love. What do you want to talk about with them? Because oh, it's, I don't know how to talk about it. She, uh, yeah, well, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I can't draw myself on but yeah. um she brought to life uh some of my favorite parts in the book and uh just I love the drawings of the witch and um she did a great job I've been a fan of Betty Rocksteady since the Riding Skies so mm -hmm. that's cool um yeah she just had great ideas and um it's like totally her style and you know it, it, it's awesome I think people yeah. will like the the witch one specifically is honestly pretty spooky. It's a little it's unsettling. The, the facial expression is terrifying. It's a little scary. Yeah. I do love the um without spoiling the the necktie one. I found that pretty amusing. Oh, 
I did too. I loved that. I, I love that whole scene so much. I, I think about it every time, like I do dishes, I think. <laughs> so thank you for that. Be I, I don't I haven't ruled a necktie in a while. And I'm not okay. going to go again, mostly because it. of you. That's right. I'll do it. <laughs> uh what Jaws did fill the ocean, you did fill neckties. The necktie. <laughs> all right kaylee thank you so much for doing this thank you for letting us publish saint grit thank, thank you, you for other stuff as well i uh i believe i'll see you at the ghoulish book fest next yes. year i yeah, look forward yeah. to seeing you again hopefully we have a uh, mill time to talk this time but i i uh i doubt that's going to happen because i had don't seem to have time to do any socializing with anyone. I know you're running back and forth at the like fast. A, it's like a weird. fucking maniac sweating my ass off. All right. Yeah. I'm going to hit um, the button I'm supposed to.